I like that one. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> That's me when I first got started. It's like every t- every fucking turn I took was like wah, wah, wah. Yeah, you just spent a grand for nothing, bitch. <laughs> hey man, what's it like Sorry. being in business? <laughs> <laughs> That's how we started. You ready to get started? Yeah, sure. All right. So let's see here. I got a fancy button. Which fancy. one is it? It is this one. Yeah, there we go. So, Ken Ray, welcome to the show. I appreciate you. you coming by. You want to give everybody a, a shout out who you are, what you do, and uh, who you do it to? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I always throw everybody off at that one. <laughs> you definitely caught me off guard. <laughs> oh, man. Ken Ray, hey, thank you for having me, Jason. Um, uh, we're Band of Brothers of Botanicals. We do the CBD oil. Um, well, not just the oil, just anything you can think of CBD hemp related. We do it. Everything that y'all do is, is health and wellness, right? It's going to be mostly health and wellness. Um, we have vitamins, um, um, vitamins, teas, lotions, creams, things of that nature. Right now, we're having a lot of fun. Yeah. It is so easy to lose that when you start your own business, when you get going, because it's like you get caught up in the shit that's not fun, and Ooh. then you forget your spot. That's how it was for me. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I, I was like, I got out on my own for, you know, fun was on the list, but it wasn't at the top of the list. You know what I mean? Once I realized I could have fun with it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is this. this well, there's another angle to this, right? You have to think about um, when I started out, um, I did start out, came in, I was in the Army, mm-hmm. Army nurse. I thought that was fun. I mean, it was fun. I can't knock on my Army nurse in the nurse corps, but it was it was fun. So what I ended up doing was once I retired, I I didn't have, I didn't had I had no idea of what uh, what I would do. Well, so I was gonna say, whenever you retired out of the military, did you feel like you were like maybe kind of lost? Like what what's next? What do I do? Well, I was lost as shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You want to hear? Hey, funny story, real tr- true story. I have a lot of these. <laughs> So I retired. I did a little. I did a little post. One of my first posts when I retired because I was afraid of Facebook. But did a post. Have had me a couple coffees. Like, hey, uh, this is me. What am I gonna do today? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, mm, took another picture. Uh, I don't know. And then next thing you know, I, was like, eh, I think I'm gonna do. And then the next picture would be sitting in the chair. Nothing. And that nothing turned to me walking my ass back and forth from the front door to the back door to the back <laughs> back door to the front door all day long. I did that shit for two months. I had no clue what to do with myself. Oh. It was crazy. <laughs> I was afraid. I was afraid to retire. I was afraid to do all of this stuff because then you spent twenty years or twenty plus years mm-hmm. doing something. Doing. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. your your day is basically planned for you. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're in charge of your own time. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's, uh, for me, it was, it ended up being a pretty, pretty good thing. And I just kind of fell, almost fell into the, I always had an interest in the cannabis and hemp industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, but once I retired, I kind of, I kind of fell into it. I was like, oh, let me try it. Yeah. yeah I, I yeah. was a skeptic. Yeah. I yeah. Like, man, that shit don't work. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you got cool in a bottle, a 30 milligram, a 30 milliliter bottle. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Miss me with that one, bro. <laughs> I was that guy. Yeah. So what made you a believer? Um, I tried it. I would do the little sublingual drops mm-hmm. every, whenever I remember, every so often, every every couple of days. Mm-hmm. And I did not notice anything different. My wife noticed. She's like, dude, um, what are you doing? What are you taking? I was like, <laughs> The hell you mean? What am I thinking? <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't like taking medication. I say, oh yeah, I'm taking those little drops on the on the mantle over there. I, I take them every now and then. I don't think that shit's working. She said, like, wrong, wrong, buddy. <laughs> Keep taking it. It works. Really? I'm like, really? It does? I'm like, yeah, right. So that prompted me. So to, what, what did it do for you? So I mean, it just put you. First of all, what was it? It was something with koi, mm-hmm. uh, 300 milligram CBD. Okay. Just straight CBD. And then a couple ice. drops under the tongue. Yeah, yeah, sublingual under the tongue, 45 seconds, swallow it. I've had a meniscus surgery in my left knee in December 2008 as well as December 2009. I've been walking with a limp since 2009. Mm. However, I was walking down the stairs that day. I was like, holy shit, my knee isn't hurting. Wow. And I haven't had a limp since. Really? And that just made me think, it's like, dude, this, that, that, that one 300 milligram bottle was 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. I said, like, this is expensive. Yeah. It has to be a way to make it 
more affordable. accessible and yeah. affordable for you no know, for guys like me or like veterans with PTSD and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's why I decided to get in that business, and I went I went head first, and I was like, dude, this stuff <laughs> working on me. I was a I was a class A asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from from, from you no know, from time to time. Sure. But yeah. I mean, you know, when they you know with the PTSD and anxiety, I mean, there were days I was sitting in my truck. You know, I come in here mm-hmm. and shoot, shoot yeah. crap with you, and uh, I would go out to um, I would go to Randolph. There, no, I'm gonna pass out business cards. Yeah, I would sit in my truck for an hour and never get out. Mm. I can remember the same thing with me, you know, because you know I identify as a introvert or whatever, right? So like, I'll go to you know back whenever I was pushing Acme or whatever, I, we'd go to these realtor conventions or whatever, some whatever's got going on, and then I would be in a parking lot like. Dude, just go in there. And That's when I out, met you. Just hand out five cards. Just go hand out five cards, and then you, you then you've made some sort of progress. You yeah. know, like, I, it, but it was this battle sitting in the truck with the truck running. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm you know, I'm like googling how to be freaking sociable. You know what I mean? You <laughs> it know, was it's horrible. It was. It's funny that you said that, and I, I tell people about that all the time about you and the Delgados, Jason mm-hmm. and Mitzi. Mitzi. Mm-hmm. Because I would go to those events, and I would see you. That's when I first met you. You would sit there, and I think you only passed out, like, five damn cars. I was like, who is this Probably. tall guy over here? He's just like, uh, you, and I could tell you were pretty nervous. Hell yeah. <laughs> but most of the time, I was, I was in that same boat with you. But you guys made it a lot easier for me to be at those events. Really? You yeah. say, look at this awkward duck over here, man. If he's what? out here doing it, I can do it. <laughs> well, it wasn't that because you guys were so friendly. You oh. always brought me in the crowd. Nice, I nice. mean, yeah. you guys didn't realize that, but I tell a couple other people, I say, yeah, those guys are the, they're the bomb. They yeah. need something, I, I got them. Once I started getting into it and really started doing a lot of, I do a lot of direct sourcing. I go direct to the yeah, source. Yeah. I want to make sure that it's got, it has to taste good. Mm-hmm. Okay. It has to be. Everything in your store you've tried? Oh, I've tried. Okay. Oh, except for, <laughs> except for a couple, a couple of things I haven't tried. I haven't tried the bath bombs. I'm not a bath guy. I'm just sorry. <laughs> oh, and, oh, and the teas. I don't do that. Don't don't do tea and don't do bath bombs. Well, I can't else. do the tea, but I just I'm just not a tea guy. Sure. Um, but that's 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 about it. Yeah. Pretty much, I hadn't tried. For me, it was quality control. So I found I found myself and or find myself doing the same things that I'm that I was doing in the military. Yeah. That was crazy. It's just everything. Just kind of come back to you natural, huh? I mean, everything as far as from when I was a private to when I was a field grade officer as a major. We were doing the same thing. So quality, you know, as a major, you're talking about quality control, uh-huh. making sure everything is good, your ducts are lined up in a the row. Then now it's like, okay, how do I get customers in here? How do I target these these individuals? Yeah. Or you know, the, just to get that, to drive that traffic. And we do the same thing is just like we did when we learned to do, set up ambushes. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Look at that. That's awesome. You, you just, you, you're just employing the same tactics, just a different way. Uh, you, oh, you're, you're going to have to break that down for me. <laughs> you're going to have to break that because I, I, I got my pen ready. I, I want to know. I want to know how you do ambush sales. It's not ambush. All right, all right, ready, go. <laughs> you just ambushed me. So like that, but we'll just. <laughs> but you want to, you just want to drive traffic to you. And the way you drive it is like, okay, there's some of the things I do. It's like, oh, well, um, I give away product. Um, You go to different locations. You, you're targeting. You want to be, people are, I don't want to say that. <laughs> uh, let's see. People always like the they like the easy road. Yeah. That's this human path nature. of least resistance. Path of least resistance, exactly. Yep. People and are like water. I, I'm I just had, gonna flow. I had, well, <laughs> so I, I had a, a, this 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 guy that uh, I used to work for many years ago. He used to say he was a developer, many a, stor- a storage developer, and he would say people are like water. He says they're gonna take the path of least resistance. So he was like, if you're looking at tra- and he was talking about traffic counts. Yeah. He was like, if you have a high traffic count, but there's like it bottlenecks at certain times of the day. He goes, people are, they're going to go down side roads to get to get past where they're getting past. You know what I mean? So he was like, you know, he was, he was the point that he was making was, is that sometimes the high traffic count roads with the really expensive land, um, are, are great to get in, but also there are plenty of opportunities on the, the roads that are real close to those uh, because people are like water, and they're just trying to get around all of the the 
the the blockage or whatever. Anyway, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're fine. <clears throat> but this is exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you explained it almost to a T. Okay. You have the one store right now? Yes, we only have one. So I remember you used to come by and get um, drawings, uh, construction uh, drawings printed out. It's one of my failures. <laughs> one of your failures? Did Well, because I remember thinking, it, see, and maybe I'm, I'm way off base, but it did seem like it took a long time to get the store open. Like to get, to, to, for them to let you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah no, that's like not the, the permitting thing. promise. The permitting process. Um, that, was a lear- that was just a learning curve. A lot of people say, you know, they talk about the city of Ciblo and how bad it is to open up a business and everything. But we have to also understand there's only a handful of those guys. Yeah. Um, and they're actually not bad people. They're actually pretty good people. They were very helpful. Uh, even one of the, the the main guys there, and I can't remember his name, but he was he was great, mm-hmm. you know, but it did take a while. Yeah. Because well, I had to do a lot of, I had to do a lot of, I had to learn to do a lot of things myself, like drywall and, and tape really? and float. <laughs> really? You did all that yourself in there? I did. We did most, most of a it, lot of it. A lot of it? Um, my my uh, sons and one of my cousins, we did a lot of, like the flooring, yeah, but the walls, the ceiling, painting. Yeah. Uh, digging out the plumbing. So when you say you had to, um, Why? Budget restrictions, or you oh. you had a, a, a it was a, a lack of uh, why did you choose oh, to take that all three <laughs> yeah yeah is it was that what it was yeah this was my first commercial lease okay um even though I'm a real estate agent mm-hmm. commercial the commercial aspect the real estate is a total totally different beast yeah, it is and like the dummy any I, I should I'm not gonna say dummy but I, I should have seek assistance from maybe my broker at the time okay. Which I didn't. I was like, oh, let me go try this I and know do what I'm myself. doing. I know what I got. It. <laughs> However, I didn't. So I'm probably paying premium right now, which I know, for rent, which is okay. Um, the lease started, I signed the lease two months later. Uh, the lease, I have to start paying rent. Mm-hmm. You know, it took me two months just to get the plans through their office to prove to send to the city. Mm. So here it is. Four months later, I'm paying. Or two months later, I'm paying rent, which wasn't part of my budget. Right on and something you can't even sell anything out of. I can't sell anything out of it. And then now, not only am I paying rent, now I got to try to get guys to come in, or contractors to come in to do this work. So mm-hmm. now I'm, I'm waiting on contractors, which you no, know, they come whenever they get they get ready. And yep. so that ate up a lot of money. And it was just it was a that that those were the growing pains. How long have you, how long has that store been open? We were in there about uh, about eighteen months. The day we opened was the day Texas shut down. For oh my god, <laughs> I made oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> I made twelve dollars and ninety nine cent. <laughs> and then they said everybody go home, and I stayed there for twelve hours. <laughs> oh, I bet you. So, well, so were you second guessing yourself there? Oh man, I almost cried. Bro. Yeah. I was like, damn, I think I bet on the wrong horse, guys. And I just I sat there like I was just sitting there in the dark by myself. I was like, damn. The hell was here, I here I am, eighty grand later, mm. and the lease that nah, they don't give a damn whether you were selling anything they or they not. Don't give a shit. It's like, hey, where's my rent? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Getting your CFO and opening opening for business took mm-hmm. way longer than you thought. Yeah, it took me about eight months, dude. <laughs> it, it took you eight months to get open. About eight months. So, and what did you anticipate? What did you when you when you went into this? What did you think it was going to take? A couple months. Three I, months. I, I actually, I honestly thought it would take about two months. Yeah. Well, it's it should have, but I mean, with me, would it be my first time the commercial? Yeah, the whole. And then no hiring contract and dealing with contracts. You know, most. I hate to say it, but a lot of contra- a lot of contractors out there, they're just not the most reliable people. Yeah. Not it, in my experience. Experience. <laughs> it hasn't been. I mean, I had a guy run off with a grand. Oh. I did have a no. My HVAC guy was uh, he was solid. Yeah, he's a really good guy. I mean, I mean, people call they, they come out and quoting you thirty thousand dollars for a six six and seven thousand dollar job. And it was, it was it was it was a big headache. Yeah, it was a huge learning curve. And if you're not careful, if you don't have someone with you that know that process or who has been through that process, they will eat you alive. Nobody's going to care about you more than you, and it shouldn't be. And nobody is going to care about your business more than you. So. Um. Yeah. You know. You. 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 Yeah, you know. You got to protect that. You know. Because everybody's going to be out there to get theirs for their businesses. You oh, know what I mean? Oh, they're getting it. So yeah, that's <laughs> they're getting it. Yeah, they're yeah. they gonna get it. <laughs> Especially if they if they're doing any of that construction stuff. Oh yeah, they they're gonna get it. 
my show here is about entrepreneurship. Okay. So what's I'm going to say this and it's going to sound horrible, but I like horrible. <laughs> I'm accustomed to horrible. What man. what's what's kind of a kick in the gut is you got a um a small business, a small a small guy who's uh, let's just say he's framing houses, right? Mm-hmm. And then so you know, you got uh, in in construction you have um a tier of talent in your business. You have usually the foreman who knows everything that needs to go on with the job. And then it tapers down to the grunt. You know what I mean? So usually the higher they get up that ladder, the more they start thinking about making their own business. Mm -hmm. Why am I making the boss all this money? You know what I mean? So what, what's kind of, I've seen happening here lately is, you know, these guys that are trying to keep business, trying to get business, you know what I mean? They're, talent their help their employees they're just starting their own thing and then they take a couple guys with them you know what i mean and mm-hmm. it's like there's all these you know and i don't want to call them fly by night but there's all these guys that have started their own businesses you know th- th- that are just doing they're not doing big volume of work but they're staying busy they're starting their own thing you know what i mean it's a it's a cycle man i mean that's i mean that's how that's that's how i got it on my own that's how you know it, it's just it's interesting how things are kind of it's shaking very, out right now. You got material shortages, which means you got high prices of shit, which mean, you know, and then you've got labor shortages because everybody's either quitting or they're overextended as it is, you know. It's like there's so many there's so there, there's a lot of variables, but there's so many different reasons why. And I and I get it. I understand it. Um but you have to show your employees that they're valued. Mm-hmm. You can't treat them like employees, right? You have to give them. You got to treat them like they're partners, mm-hmm. and you have to pay them as such. <laughs> if you yes. if you're able to or close to it, well, and it, you'll it, get more production out of them. In the employee's mind, it doesn't matter if you can afford it or not. Yeah, they feel uh, like they're worth more. They're going to have a chip on the shoulder until they get more. You can't. It, money only goes so far. You know what I mean? Like. You, you, yes. You, you can, <laughs> well, let's say, I mean, you know, let's just, and I'm throwing numbers out here. This is no way related to my business or anything. But so, like, let's say you're paying somebody $10 an hour, mm-hmm. right? And, and everybody's happy, okay? And then if you come in and give them $20 an hour, that employee is going to be ecstatic. He doubled my pay. In six months, that, it, that enthusiasm is going to be gone. Yeah. So I have a different model. You know what I'm working on, a different model. Because... <laughs> Still military background. Yeah, yes. it co- pops up again. It's like I was talking to one of my other buddies. My job as a as an owner is, and it, it's good. It, it's it's, it's to, to create a win win. Okay. So I want to train that employee to be where I'm at. That's the incentive. an owner, an owner. Okay. So and that's then that's where that's where I'm at right now. Um, and I just got there faster than I thought I would. Yeah. Um, with trying to franchise because if you're working with me, I'm bringing you in at 15, 20 bucks an hour. You're working with me. You're because you, you know to work with me and to work in this industry, you, you have to be trustworthy. When you decided that you were going to start your first store, did you think that this could be that this could happen? That you was going to franchise? Hell no. No, <laughs> no. You just that's awesome. That's exciting. That's what's exciting about business. So it can be. I went home. I went. I'm from Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Go to Mississippi. I had this great product, man. They was killing us on this Delta H stuff. It's like blah blah blah. So I go there with this new product that we have. And I sell it now. I sell a crap ton of it. It's it's great product. Um, and I try to put it on their shit wholesale it. Mm-hmm. The guy kind of blew me off. He's just like you know he wouldn't return my call, wouldn't answer text message anything. And I was like, oh wow. And I know it's a great product. Yeah. Like, Dude, I, I, I sell 100 jars a, a week. And he blew me off. I was like, why wouldn't he want this? And it lit a fire. It just started me, my mind to start going. Mm-hmm. That, guy, that, that man telling me no lit a fire to my ass. Because when he, we talked for like an hour when I met him. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, man, I have five stores. Um, we're going to get ready to, we're buying this land. We're going to build a shopping center. And I'm like. A what center? A shopping center. Oh, okay. They're doing a deal with uh, Chick Fil A. I was like, this guy's. So I'm, I'm, I'm a numbers guy. I'm, yeah. I'm calculating numbers in my head. It's like five stores, blah blah blah. It's like, okay. 
to be where I want to be and to be taken as serious as I want to be taken, I have to generate those kind of numbers. Mm. Hundred yards didn't mean nothing to him. No, it doesn't mean shit. That's what I mean. That's what you're thinking. That's what you're doing. Resistance. If you're doing hundred jars in five, six stores, yeah, different numbers. It's yeah, a big number. Mm-hmm. So, and when I go out here, if you to like like now, I'm currently looking for new locations in San Antonio. No, I don't think they want to see. Oh, what are your financials? Mm. I don't care about. Yeah, we, 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 don't we, care about you. You're a veteran with you know, show you me the numbers. Burn center and yeah. you a nurse, former uh, retired nurse, and all that. I don't care about that. Show me the numbers. Yeah, how do you generate those numbers? So that's where, and that's why I, I got to the point where you know what? I need to. I need more location to move more product. I don't believe in tier pricing. For example, like if I buy one bottle or a hundred bottles, I'm gonna get the same price from you. Yeah, yeah, you get the same price. That's how, that's how, I, well, no, that's how I started Acme uh, because I felt <clears throat> it, it, I don't want to say it sucked, but I mean like, you know, I'm paying little old me, I'm paying a dollar a page, you know, at, at, uh, you know, this has been years ago, I'm paying a dollar a page, but the big guys that do a lot of volume, they're paying a quarter a page, you know what I mean? And it's like, I can't afford it. I can't afford a dollar a page. Those guys can. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, it kind of sucks. It seems like it should be in reverse kind of. Yeah. And I know that's not how this <laughs> works, but you know, yeah, it seemed like so. So I'm like, whenever I started Acme, um, uh, the, the, the reaper graphic side of things, print and blueprints, it's same thing. It's one price. You know yeah. what I mean? It, and it's based on a square foot. Oh man. People could not believe your price. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 but I mean, I'm like, but I send it to him. He's like, Oh my God, is this real? <laughs> like, oh yeah, man. I go down there all the time. <laughs> So I mean, yeah, that's 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 incredible that you can offer that. I've been meeting a lot of wonderful people in in this business and uh, in the community. Well, and like you said a little while ago, <laughs> you're having fun. Oh man, so much fun! Yeah, you no get to see, the same. You get to see um uh, you get to see results. I guess. Yeah, you see people coming in and saying, you know, I, I like this. You know, the, the inf- inflammation is a big thing. It's mostly right. sleep. Mostly sleep. Yeah, to sleep. You get your, you know, if you if you can get if you can get to sleep, you give your body a chance to rest and rejuvenate. Yep, uh, a lot of that. Uh, it takes a lot of a lot of no sleep takes care of a lot of a lot of issues. Who knew your body knows what it's doing? Yeah, everybody knows. <laughs> you right. just get out of its way, huh? Exactly. <laughs> when you're talking to the customers, they have to trust you. Yeah, because they're telling you about the the intimate, most yeah. intimate parts yeah. of their life. Kim and I were just talking about this. So if uh, and if they don't trust you, then they're they're not gonna. They're not coming back. Right. First of all, they may not even buy anything. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to listen to what you're saying. Right. And and they're definitely not coming back. How do you come up with uh, pricing for your products? How, <laughs> do, how, how do you, uh, I mean, like, you're taking something and it's like. You want the real answer or the bullshit? <laughs> Let's start with the bullshit and give me the, then they give me the real answer. The bullshit is uh, I just tried to make it as cheap as possible. <laughs> uh, the real answer is, uh, it's kind of funny. I looked at everyone else's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wildly expensive, and <laughs> I just dropped it by twenty bucks. Really? Because <laughs> you're still making money. It's yeah, not, it's not me. It's, well, I mean, people oh, are getting a better deal, and I want to make money. Sure, yeah, like yeah, everyone. Nobody else. wants to get in business to starve. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, for me, is the the fun is the fun for me is having people come in that interaction mm-hmm. and them and knowing that they're getting something that's good, that's benefiting them. So uh, quite the difference, huh? You, when you we, when we started this conversation, you were talking about how you was in your truck and you did the anxiety. You didn't even want to get out and talk to these people. Oh, yeah. And now you enjoy having people come see you. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's different. I mean, anytime you have a woman comes, hey, you know, I need something that's going to make me less of a bitch. <laughs> it's like, oh, step right this way. Right over here on this <laughs> aisle, we have just that. <laughs> yeah, she was there yesterday. It's, now she was there with both her kids. She, oh, everybody likes me now. It's like... <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, that's 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 my day. Do you have any um, direct competition in the area? Oh man, I have a shit ton it, of competition. Is it really? Is it that? Is it you saturated? have um, yeah, uh, saturated. Probably not the right word, but I mean, there's. What well, is the right word? Is it? I it mean, is it is the right saturated. word. I mean, the market is saturated. Um, there there have been businesses around here who has actually failed. You know, there were three locations. I know uh, there's a location with CBD Zars that you know before they got there, 
I tried to get that location. They wouldn't. They didn't. They didn't understand what CBD was. That was one of the growing pains. Oh man! And then two I, months later, it's like, oh, they're there. I could have. It could have cost me ten grand to open that store instead of eighty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and just, I, I remember the, the um, credit card processors. Oh Jesus! There's like Square. There was um. <laughs> where was it? There was a place in um. Oh hell! Garden Ridge, that they were having a real hard time because it was like ah. every time that they. Every he time me, he helped me. Every time they, it seemed like they kind of got the ball rolling, then it was like, oh well, um, they, they, um, you know, like the they, the, the credit card processors were, would stop processing because they're like, oh well, that's illegal, you know, or whatever the hell, you oh, know, whatever. I, I just you know. went through it. Did you really? I really. So is, is that still that's still a thing? That's still going on? Oh yes, most definitely. So. It took me six months to get processing. I found well, this before I opened, I, I was like, okay, I need to get this credit card processing because I see it's gonna be a problem. So mm-hmm. I got it. I started I looked at credit card processing and the ATM. Mm-hmm. So we got credit card processing, which is great. And just before I opened, they stopped processing. It, Cause they kinda lump us in with marijuana. Okay. Well, so yeah. it's not FDA, you know, not FDA or federally regulated. However, hemp and C B D is it's federally legal. Mm-hmm. I, you know, which is why we can have bank accounts and stuff like that. So I finally I got my square processing up with the beta program. The guy from uh, in Green Cross. Green, Green Cross. Yeah. Yes. I can't believe I forgot. Green Cross, he he got me on the door. He, he, he helped me a lot. As a matter of fact, he gave me about 10 grand worth of products. Nice. Um, you know, on a 15-day net, which helped me out tremendously. Yeah. Um, kudos to him. But um, with that processing with Square... They just go through a scan every now and then. If you have anything in your website, social media that says that, they stop your process. Well, they won't stop the processing. You can still process. They just stop your deposits. Oh, oh yeah, that's <laughs> nice of them. Yeah, well, yeah. We'll go ahead. And, we'll take the money, but we won't give you the money. So yeah, you know, imagine you're, that. It, no, so you're you're looking at your bank account. You go to you sign in your computer every day. It's like, <laughs> oh, why did they deposit the money? It's like, oh, upcoming deposit. Okay, cool. Upcoming deposit. That number keeps growing and going. Yeah. Like. How, how do we get it to, from upcoming to now? <laughs> yeah. So I go and check my email. I was like, "Oh, something must have happened." So it took me. So it took about three weeks, three weeks, and twenty thousand dollars later. So I, I mean, I was at a point where I couldn't pay rent. I couldn't do this because of processing. What do you mean twenty thousand dollars later? Right, yeah, man. Couldn't. Like it cost you twenty grand. No, it didn't cost me twenty grand. It was just sitting they there. They were holding. They were holding. They were holding. The, so, every, so that was your money that you couldn't use. Yeah, I got you. Okay, yeah, yeah. So did you did you did you get it? Oh yeah. So how do you how do you how do you do that? Um, so they're holding it because they're like, there's something that you do that we don't agree with. So we're gonna hold your money. We're gonna hold it till you you find it and you fix it. You are telling me because I'm in this business, I can't open a bank account. Um, because it's not federally legal, I can't take tax breaks mm, I can't advertise on this platform this website or anything however I'm supposed to give you 25% of everything I make and you can go and take the very money that I couldn't put in a bank or get insurance with for my business and you take that same money and put it in your bank account yeah oh that's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard yeah you're well, right man but when people don't you know they don't think of it that way because it's not said out loud that way. So um, your competition, right? You, you had said that, uh, you know, there's a lot of competition that you have. Like, do you have actual stores in your area? It's friendly competition. Okay, well, then that's where I was going with it. So uh, uh, Josh, that's his name, Josh. He's a pretty good guy. Um, he helped me out, payment processing, got a lot of his product, put him on my shelf. Um, great dude. Uh, that's what... Um, I keep forgetting the name of it. I always want to say go green, but it's green. Green cross. Green cross. Green cross. The other one is sacred leaf on three double oh nine. That's another one. Um, he gave me some, he would come by. He saw I was opening. He, he started stopping by. He's doing, check me out. And, uh, but he, he gave a lot of good advice. Nice. Um, purple leaf, purple. which is probably about four miles, three, four miles from me, right on main street, on main street. Um, I talked to some of the guys who gave me some good good sound advice on how to, you know, source some products, some okay. some labs. You know, we still get things lab, even though we get. I don't I don't make anything, but every now and then I have a wire. It's like hey, let's do a, a instead of a, a, let's do an extra test and just send that out to see make sure we are, everything is and great. Quiet, yeah, yeah. Um, so you have to lab test all of your stuff. Everything. 
You personally? No, I don't. I'm, no, I don't mean like in, a, in you personally. Yeah, but I'm saying, but like no, your uh, product. Uh, everything is. I, I want to say everything that we have is third party. Mm-hmm. Every now and then, I'm like, eh, let me just try this one. Mm-hmm. I want to see because you know anybody can bullshit a test. Sure, but I just want no. I spot check, which okay. is. That's how you should do it when we were private. That's yeah. what I did when I was a commander. Spot check your people. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, just pick something at random. Take that lab result that I have, lab test that the current COA that I have, and compare it to the, the brand new one. Make sure it's equitable. Very nice. So how, have you found any discrepancies? Nah. Really? Nah. So what would one person get in your store as opposed to going to somebody else's store? You know what I mean? Like what, 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 um... You gonna get the best. I'm just, well, no, I that's mean what, that's what every, everyone says. Get the best. Um, I tailor everything towards women. Okay. I mean, as you know, I'm a nurse. Mm-hmm. Uh, twenty five, twenty five, twenty four, twenty five years as a as a nurse, registered nurse. Um, women do all the shopping. Mostly. Well, most women, most they guys, don't have as big an ego as most men. Exactly. So. When they come out, I'm in here looking for something for my husband. <laughs> and it's like, where's your husband? Yeah. I, I'm going to get him to take it. He just, take it, take this. He just doesn't know it yet. And you know what? He's going to take it. Yeah. And the next time she comes, guess who's with him? Yeah. Her. Yeah. Her husband. Uh, or the boyfriend. Yeah. So uh, I tailor everything. I gear, have everything geared toward to however most women will like it. Yeah. Down to colors, labels, and all that stuff. It's smart. It's very smart. Just to see someone come in. Now, lady come in. Uh, I, I can tell she was having a really tough go at it, man. It's like it's like life was just sitting on top of her head. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, you know what's what's going on? What's, you all right? Oh, I just went through a really bad divorce. It's just got final today. I said, oh, babe, feel bad for you. You know, you know what? I got what you need. Here you go, taking a leap. Mm-hmm. She said, no, I need to pay you. No, no, you you. You need a break. Yeah. This is your break. Take your blessing and get out my store. <laughs> <laughs> but come back and see me when you need more. <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen her. I haven't seen. I see her friends though. She, yeah. she told about five of her friends, and they all still come. Nice. And then I mean, they're great people. And then like her friends come, then her mom and dad come. It's like the whole family comes. I see. I see everybody with her. But you know, it's it's, it's stuff like that. Or, or to have someone in there that's having a really tough go, and you give them a little. I give them one of those drops, like the fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting there and talking. And it's like, oh, I feel so much better. And I know. I say, I know. <laughs> I, I saw it leave your face, nice. and they just sit there and they be relaxed, and, and they come all the time. I mean, that's why I say we we have a no BS approach to um, what they can and can't use, and what will to try to tailor their their treatment needs to them. Yeah, individualize the treatment. Nice. All right, lightning round. Here we go. I got these cards here. I'm going to ask you these questions. You answer them however you want to answer them. Ready? All right. <clears throat> Would you rather have very fat arms with skinny legs or skinny arms with fat legs? Which one? Fat arms, skinny legs? Fat arms. Fat arms. Got skinny legs skinny anyway. Legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. All right. Would you rather be single for a year, this includes no dating, or go on bad dates for a year straight? I'd rather be single. Yeah. yeah real. Damn that. <clears throat> Would you rather get your... <laughs> Would oh, jeez. Uh, would you rather get your hands stuck in a meat grinder or a blender? Blender. Yeah? Because my hand will stop that blender. And that meat grinder going to keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Would you rather fart in an elevator full of strangers or burp loudly while giving an important presentation at work? Oh, the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do that one often. <laughs> What do you call that crop dusting? (laughs) Have a good day, guys. (laughs) See y'all later. I wonder, was that him? (laughs) Would you rather have no eyebrows or an extra finger? I go to uh, eyebrows. You go to eyebrows? No eyebrows. 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 All right, so that was the lightning round. (laughs) What's the one thing that you wish you knew before starting Band of Brothers? How to name it. Really? Yes. So the name, I started with Band of Brothers CBD. Mm-hmm. However, at that time, because it was so still so new, yeah, people were saying it was confusing CBD with marijuana. Or, that, no, they didn't know that CBD and hemp was is actually used interchangeably. So 
hemp would be okay for like let's say for the insurance company, but CBD wouldn't. Mm. Um, I couldn't I couldn't put hemp or CBD on the building sign per the landlord's instructions. So mm. it's like so I, the okay. bank takes one thing and then the landlord takes uh, another. It, well, they said I couldn't put it on the sign, so I was like I had to come up with something as far as like so I used. I said Banner Brothers CBD, so I had to go back and change the name to Banner Brothers Botanicals. Mm -hmm. And then when I tried to get, so I walked around with, as I finished the build, I had a like twenty something, twenty five thousand dollars check in my pocket. I couldn't cash it because I could, I didn't have a bank account. Oh my god! I I, I literally could not get a bank account because when they go and check the tax ID, they mm -hmm. see where it said CBD. Mm. So CBD was off limit to banks at the time. So yeah, the name. Over the next five years, where do you where do you where do you think your store is going to be? Wow. Or your business, or, or you know, what, how, where do you think, how, you know, where do you think in, in five years the landscape's going to look like? Uh, you know, you're going to have twenty stores. You're going to have two stores. You're going to retire with all the CBD money, or you see what I'm saying? What do, what do you what are you looking at in five years? Oh, I'm. It'd probably be a, probably 130, 140 stores. Not yeah. all mine. They'd be independently owned and operated. Yeah, franchisees. But I, I want them. I want them everywhere. How do you? How do you become relevant in the community? How do you get out there? How do you? How do you get people walking in the door? I got to the point to where in the business I was generating enough income where the community paper they came in. I said, like, you know what? I, my thoughts is, like, dude, nobody reads this shit. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I give it a shot. Uh, lady Salacy, so she heard about why I did this, and she told her editor. And the editor came to do an interview, and they ran that interview in the paper because I was like, you know, I guess I signed up for an ad space for six months. Mm -hmm. So she ran the, did the interview, did the story, and oh my god, it's like, hey, using that paper, man. I come here because. You know, I trust what you're going to say. You're an army nurse. You're a veteran. You're not one of these people who say it's veteran on. You're never here. Yeah. He's like, you're actually a veteran. And, and and they know that I'm telling the truth about what it is that they're getting. If I don't have it and I don't think it's going to work, I say, ah, that's bullshit. Don't, don't buy that. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, so that newspaper, you got your newspaper. It, a lot of exposure for you. A lot. Really? A lot more. Than, I didn't think anybody read it. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to choose just one. What do you think your biggest mistake was with opening your store, your Band of Brothers? If you if you had to say, man, this was the biggest mistake. Doing that transaction myself. What transaction? The lease. Doing that real that commercial real estate transaction myself. I should have hired someone else. I okay. should have not been so proud to do it myself. Okay. That's fair. That's I, I screwed the pooch on. I screwed myself. Yeah, I screwed, yeah, I screwed myself on that. Um, a lot of times we, it's a, and sometimes I guess it's just a man thing too. Um, we don't we don't want to ask for that help. <laughs> what, what's the biggest <laughs> misconception about your industry right now? It's a gateway drug. Yeah, it's bullshit. I made more people drug addicts than anybody than any weed than than any strand of weed ever will. Really? Yes, I have professionally working right there in the u.s army burn center the institute of surgical research yeah i put y'all ass on blast but you know what we use mm. primary drug fentanyl mm. primary everybody gets it dilute it number two if less you're allergic to morphine is metabolites mm -hmm. morphine morphine six glucuronide um morphine is another one don't use it as much because dilute is one much much more powerful uh, benzos, mm -hmm. and we're giving you. Whip, I'm pumping, and you're, and you're on this stuff pretty much twenty four seven. It's continuous drip for about three or four months. So you tell me who's a drug addict or not, mm. or who has the p potential to become one. Yeah. So we start really early. That's the good thing about the burn unit. I'm not saying that everyone comes out. We have, well, I was like, we they have measures in place to once you start getting better to start. Weaning you off. Bringing you down off of it so you're not going to feel like that. And they start, and they provide you with the support and the counseling so you won't be dependent nice. on it. So However. It's still a it's still a journey, man. That's I'm tough. giving the most powerful drugs on the land next to heroin mm. in the burn unit. 
legally. So the the biggest misconception about your store, your industry, oh yes, is people think that it's a gateway drug. Mm-hmm. Gateway drug, it, or it, my store is like a CBD store is a head shop. It's a head shop. Head shop or smoke shop. I couldn't be the first thing. Only I, I've only you know what have I've only ever been, been into a head shop. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of head shop? No, 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 not you. I mean, like you know, you're comparing me to something you don't even have any idea you've well, been I, in. I've only, only I've, to date, I've only been in one, and that was Which recently. One? Oh gosh, is it here in town? San Antonio. San Antonio. Um, there's a, what is it's that popular one? Never. It's a, it's a popular one too. I think it's Supernova. Plant. Oh. Planet K. I've been to Planet K. I haven't been to Planet K yet. I've been in Planet K. Yeah. I need to check them and out. And it's, dude. It's a lot of, they have a lot of stuff, man. Yeah. It's, but, it's totally different. Man. Stuff on top of stuff. It's, th- yeah. Well, so like when you walk into Planet K, at least my, my experience, right? I walk into Planet K, I'm just like. Overwhelmed. Oh my God. There's <laughs> so much shit everywhere. You know what I mean? That's I mean, I, I mean, and then it's like, and then it's just like, you, you could start here. You could start here. And by the time you get to this end of the aisle, you started in with rolling papers and you're down here into like bondage, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> that escalated quick. <laughs> you know? I was like, and this was just the first aisle. Okay. Well, let's see what's on aisle number two. <laughs> that's, you know what? And that's why I, that, that's why I think that's, that's why I had a lot of pushback. I've been looking for a location, a second location in San Antonio area for a while. I'm not going to say why a couple of them I hadn't gotten, but I've been looking for a while. And one of the main reasons is because that we haven't, Landlords are like, no, we're good because they don't want smoke shop. They don't want a head shop, right? In, in their building. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to. A lot of times when I ask, I, you know, I try to take pictures of my place. I was gonna say, it seems like you almost have to, to go in there with a propo- like a, a a presentation. Yeah, because I, like, I don't sell glass. I don't sell. I, mean, I have glass. I have one little set of graph pipes. That's it. Right. Um, but the rest of the stuff, I don't, I don't sell all that stuff. It's, it's very, it's very well organized. It's spaced out, and you, you know, you can come in, you can sit, you can relax and chill, or you get your stuff. You can go however you want to do it. And you can sit in your shop and, and uh, take yeah. load of, huh? Who's your, who's your ideal customer? Come by about seven thirty. No, <laughs> come by about six forty five. How late are y'all open? Seven. Seven. Yeah. We- Close up, about once, I close, once I close up and turn the light we on, we close at seven, but we don't leave till ten. <laughs> Who's your idea? What What's your ideal? Like, um, maybe not. Well, maybe that's another question. But as of right now, describe for me who your most common customer is. Ooh, dude, that's a oh snap. That's pretty. That's gonna be tough. Yeah, you get you got a broad range, yeah. It's very broad. It's <laughs> you get the from the grandmas to the everybody. You know? Oh, I'm glad you said grandmas. There's a little lady. Uh, oh gosh, I I call her Ma. Little little Caucasian lady. She's she can't. She's about 120 pounds wet. She she has the the cowboy hat is bigger than she is. <laughs> she has the boots on. She and she comes in with that cane. And she gets us stuff, but she, she loves it. And she's she's a hoop. Um, and they, her or her daughter. I mean, it's just that's a wide range, man. It's every walk of life. Huh? Like white, Hispanic, young, old, and you get them all coming through. Retired your store. cops. <laughs> he left yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have I have two retired cops that come. So you don't you don't have um, a profile on a type of person that is frequently in your place. Yeah. No, you get all kinds. It doesn't matter. That's awesome. No, no, no. I'm yeah, not yeah, saying. I'm no, just no. Saying, I'm just yeah. It does. Yeah. Not, not, not that it matters. It's just uh, yeah, It's just you think of them, they come. Nice. I'm just. It's so crazy. I guess what I'm saying is, is like if you were if you were gonna go about this on a super analytical data nerd level like I would like if you were going to put your store in the middle of a nursing home versus the middle of a high school you know what I'm saying it's like where is your demographic you know what I'm saying and so what you're saying is it sounds like it's everywhere I mean people are just you just need high traffic 35 to 45 oh Uh, no 35 to 50 because I have um, I do, I do have, yeah, 35 to 50. I have a couple of cancer patients that come in. Uh, I have about five, one pass. That was, that was pretty tough. His, oh. his wife is a sweetheart. She, she still comes by. And I actually got to meet him before he, you know, mm-hmm. a couple of weeks before he passed. So that, that was, that was cool. He's what, a really nice guy. What were, uh, 
So the ca- the cancer patients that come see you, mm-hmm. what do they get? Do they get the same thing, or do they? No, I give them pain, uh, or is mostly. It, it's mostly pain. They, they can't sleep. Oh, uh, it's, it's it, no, because they're in so much pain. Okay, a lot of times. So um, I have a high strength delta eight THC because we can't do the other one. Mm-hmm. Not not in a oil. Uh, the gummies or something like that we can, but the uh, the this my my fifty fifty it usually works sometimes, but we do the um, delta eight THC. It's I think it's twelve twelve hundred milligrams, mm-hmm. and that's what they get. They come for that, nice. um, and it, it works really well. It helps them get get some sleep, helps them with the rest of his leg, and all because um, they're doing the chemo mm. it decreases the um, uh, nausea and vomiting. Okay. By way of the chemoreceptor trigger zone. See, most people. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, too. That's my, prob- nerd is, prob- that's my nerdism right there. <laughs> probably helps. Uh, d- does it help with appetite at all? I'd imagine. Oh, it, yes. It does know, inc- not only does it keep you from vomiting. The munchies are from nausea, but it also gives you the, yeah. The munchies are real. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. It's like, wow. I said, this, I said, I think I got the munchies. This is the first time. Hey, this is some. I'm 46 years old before I actually started smoking this stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> My nephew, we were in, uh, we took a bike ride out to Vegas, a motorcycle ride. My Me, Ooh, my nephew, geez. my son, and my brother. And then so we get, where did we get to? Um, uh, we got to Arizona before my bike, I blew a head gasket in my bike. Um, oh, so wow. they continued on to Vegas. I flew to Vegas. We met up, had the party for the kids. I flew home. My bike was out of, it was like right in the height of 2020. One July or May of 2021. So all those shortages were at peak COVID anyway, managed to have a good time. But so (laughs) whenever, whenever we were going to split ways, my nephew says, he goes here, here's a couple of cough drops or a couple of something, you know, whatever. And he goes, I got these from the CBD store down the road or whatever. And so he, he's, you know, he's really in all that. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, I was on the phone with Harley at the time, and I was like, you know, they look like Tums, you know, <laughs> and so like I take Tums all the time, you know. So then I was on the phone, I was like, all right, I was like, y'all have a good time, you know. And then so uh, I get back to my room later. Of course, I'm really burnt out because you know I'm not able to ride my bike, and it was this epic trip that I'm missing out on. Mm-hmm. And I got a brand new bike, and it just I'm um, hosed, anyways. So I'm going through all these things, right? I'm in my room. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And then um, uh, I'm on the phone. Um, I'm on the phone with my girlfriend. And then so I'm laying in bed and we're talking or whatever. And then those things fall out of my pocket. I'm on the bed and they just kind of rolled out. And I was like, oh, shit. So I grabbed those. I picked them. I picked them all up and I just ate them. And I didn't, you know, I was like, as, I, as I'm on the phone with her, I was like, why would I leave Tums in my pocket like that? They're going to get fucked up, you know. So I, I, I ate them and I was like, those aren't Tums. And then so like all this is happening in a quick flash, you know? And then so like, <laughs> I, I'm like, so we're talking or whatever. And I don't know, it was like 10 minutes. And then I just started saying the silliest shit, you know? And then I started giggling a little bit. And she's like, I said, I think, <laughs> I think I got a buzz. <laughs> I, said, I don't know for sure or not. You know, I said, but I'm all giggly and shit. And then uh, so I was, <laughs> told my nephew about it. And he was like, oh yeah, he goes, <laughs> You shouldn't have taken them all or whatever. Yeah, I was like, like, you shouldn't just ate part of, part of one, <laughs> yeah. you know? I was just saying some silly shit. I was like, those are stories I get uh, all the time. It's so much fun. It's like, it's like, oh, look, just only eat yeah. a half a cent, half a half an inch of this, okay? <laughs> only half an inch. Do not eat more than an inch. And you know what I tell them? I say, repeat after me. <laughs> I will not eat more than an inch in a two-hour period. And what do they do? They walk out of there and they eat two inches. <laughs> and they come back and tell me about it three days later. Like, man, I'm so high. I, like, I couldn't leave home. It was so funny. I, I I literally work about eighty hours a week to not work forty. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's real. It's real, it's real talk. 2018 is when we were at our height here, and we had 20 <laughs> employees. You know, and for what we do, that's huge. I was putting in stupid amount of hours. You know, but it was building this thing, this machine. It was just like, oh, man, you know, and I was into it. And then I just fizzled out. I snapped. You know what I mean? I was just like, you know, um, I went through my shit. But, but, and I don't regret none of it. 
But I think that, you know, to start a business, you've, you, you've got to be able to do that. You can't quit your job and think that you're going to work 20 hours a week and be a successful person. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I have to use that one. I like that. Parting words of wisdom. Oh, shit. What, you were words of wisdom? Parting words of wisdom. <laughs> what would you tell any budding on the fence entrepreneur that was thinking about going out on their own? How, how would, how would you, uh, be guide honest. them, guide them, be honest with yourself. Fair. Be honest with yourself. You can bullshit everybody, but yourself. Now, some of us are so good. We can convince ourselves to do some, do some dumb stuff. We can convince ourselves that this bullshit will work. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. Uh, I think we all have. However, if you, if, if, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're thinking about it, if, if you put together a well-developed and thought-out plan and go for it. This kid comes down, little minivan. And you know how he, this, this little former prior service guy, army guy, mm -hmm. you know, he's just wound up. You know, he's just one of those guys is always wound up real tight. You know, like, hey, man, you know, he's looking for stuff. And he said, man, I don't, I, don't know what to, I don't know what to do. I need something. I was like. You know, he, he wanted, I said, like, I don't know anybody who does weed, dude. I'm sorry. But I got this hemp over here. It smell <laughs> like it. It kind of tastes like, why don't you give it a shot, bro? A CBD, you know, it's good. I said, hey, you know what? Man, you're like, hmm, take it. Just go. You get out of my store, you're making me nervous. <laughs> I mean, he really he really was. Um, That was earlier that day. It was about noon. He come back about 6 o'clock. And he said, man, thank you. Wow. So what's up? I said, man, no problem, bro. You know, brother, you're good, man. You know, we're here to take care of each other. He said, man, I really appreciate you. Because um, I was really thinking about shooting myself. Oh, man. I was like, wow. Wow. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's you don't realize, a lot of times, we don't, people don't realize the impact that they're having on other people. So, you got to be careful what you say. Good and bad. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, good and bad. Well, you got to be careful about what you say. Yeah, you know I mean? You could, you, you, you might be the asshole that pushes somebody over. I could have pushed him right over the edge. Yeah, you know? So, but it's like, hey, man, why don't you come in? Sit down, relax. Talk to me for a minute. Hey, yeah. have this. And uh, he did it. And I gave him that. He went home. He smoked this thing. Uh, he ate a couple gummies or whatever and did his thing, relaxed. Um, and he's, he's still hanging out with us today nice. uh, because of that. So I don't want to say it's because of me, but it, it, it does feel good to be able to just help somebody, you know, bring them off the edge a little bit. Right, you know? place, right time. Yeah, you know? that's all it is. So, uh, for me, uh, as far as the words of wisdom, go for it, man. Put together a plan and go for it. Don't be half-assed like I was, then put together a plan. I just kind of, I kind of flew by it. Yeah. Ask for the help. Find people that are doing what you want to do. Yeah. And for the most part, there are more good people out there than there are bad. Yeah. They will help you, and there were people who helped me. It's like you know what three different guys from three different stores helped me find different things. Nice, and they helped me get like major ticket items in place, processing product, people, yeah, know how, you know, stuff like that. Right on, man. So, well, hey, dude, I appreciate you coming in today. Um, I know you're a busy guy. Um, we're yeah, gonna get to uh, we're gonna get things going here, um, man. This is a welcome, welcome break. I yeah. Oh, man, it. I appreciate you coming in, dude. Shoot. Glad you had me. <laughs> <laughs> this was fun. <laughs> right on, man. This is fun stuff, bro. Yeah, dude, I think so. Um, 